Well, hello, Lynx Players community. Okay, this is it. This is our swan song. Jeffrey Cranford back with you. We've been going over the last four weeks with Lee Strobel, and hopefully you really got some insight into, you know, why do we know this? How can we know? I mean, this happened 2,000 years ago. How can we really be confident? Well, there, we can be confident in more ways than you may have perceived. But here's the last thing I want to talk about. And I asked Lee, I came up on stage afterwards and I said, Lee, I said, say for instance, we've got, you know, our friend John or Mary or whoever we've got that we play golf with. And we've kind of talked to them and they're kind of like, ah, I don't, I'm not into that. I don't talk to me about religion or don't talk to me about that kind of thing. And, and it just feels like a dead end. So what's the next step? Is there a next step? And so I kind of posed that question to Lee, and I think you'll be interested in the way he viewed it. And by the way, he kind of grew up in a golf family, so he was very familiar in Chicago, and we talked about some of the golf courses and things. And uh, hopefully this is helpful for you, and maybe give you kind of a next step. One of the things you're going to pull away from here is just ask questions. So anyway, hope you enjoy it, and uh, I hope you've enjoyed this series too. And I want to give a big shout out to Lee Strobel and his, his whole team for allowing us to use this uh, at Lynx. Have a great, great week. So, Lee, thank you, first of all, on behalf of Church at the Red Door. And uh, the reason we don't have a red door is because it's really not our church. <laughs> University of California, but nevertheless, it's Exodus 12. You know, apply the blood, which is essentially exactly what Jesus uh, Lee has been talking about. And uh, to the doorposts of your life, it's Exodus 12. And we want to go through the red door. So there's a couple, just a couple ending questions yeah. here. So say we have Ted that's playing golf with his same group that he's played with for, you know, 20 years and wants to kind of engage, wants to broach the subject, maybe even invited them here and they're like, ah, I'm not going to go there. It's, yeah. it's difficult. Sure. Maybe give them a book and did they read it uh, or saliva, I mean, Sylvia playing tennis, you know, somebody's playing tennis with her and, you know, they want to have that next conversation. Yeah. We are thoroughly evangelical, unapologetically, right? Because how, how do you go about, it's, it's organic, I understand, it's spirit-led, yeah. but can you give us a little, maybe a, a few thoughts for how to engage? Yeah, I actually did a book that was mentioned called The Unexpected Adventure. It's a six-week, you read a little section for six weeks, it's a story from my life or my co-author's life about encounters we've had evangelistically. Some of them are funny. Some of them we mess up. Some of them God blesses in amazing ways. And then there's a little teaching that you can apply in a little um, a scripture as well. So that's one tool that might um, give you people some ideas. But I think, I think for me, the key is to ask questions. And so, you know, you could say, by the way, I met a guy the other day. You all met me, right? We've all met. Um, and he told a story about having been a skeptic. And then he investigated the evidence for Jesus and became a pastor. Um, and have you, have you ever thought about stuff like that? Is it, you know, and, and see if that, um, you know, did you ever go to church coming up? That's a great thing with Easter coming up. You can, you know, your way to get into a conversation is to say, hey, um, Easter's coming up. Um, how did you celebrate Easter when you were a kid? Oh, when I was a kid, oh, well, we'd have the cousins over, and we'd go to church, and we'd, yeah. And he'd say, well, do you still go to church? No, 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 I gave that up in college. Really? How come? Well, I just, I just didn't make sense to me anymore. Really? You know, I was just listening to a guy who uh, was a skeptic, and, and he became convinced by the evidence that it's true. And would you be interested in a little book that kind of summarizes that? Yeah, you know, and give him a copy of The Case for Easter. It's a buck, you know. Um, and, and so I think when we ask questions and get into a person's background that way, that becomes easier um, than just kind of say, hey, here's a book. Right. Well, I know for a fact, I, I don't know if Greg Solis and his family are here, they've given out hundreds of case for Christ through the years. And so that's an obviously an obvious tool. But isn't it in the end, it's time on our knees. It's thoughtful, winsome. You mentioned the word winsome, caring, compassionate, relationship building. And then when those doors do open, there's plenty of backup and leaves the backup among many other apologists. But there's plenty of, we don't, we don't have to shy away it's somebody who starts doing their spiritual due diligence. You, you don't have, go ahead. What's interesting to me is that, and I mentioned this at the Apologetics Conference, that um, um, Jesus' prayers for lost people continued right up until his final gasps on the cross. Um, when you read the 
account of the crucifixion in the original Greek, one thing you notice is the imperfect tense suggests Jesus didn't just say it once, but he kept repeating it, probably all through the torture of the crucifixion. Father, forgive them. Father, forgive them. Father, forgive them. And you don't know what they do. So Jesus, till his final gasps on the cross, was praying for people so spiritually depraved that they were killing the Son of God. And John Stott, the famous British pastor, said, in light of that, how can we not pray consistently and fervently and expectantly for lost people? So I think, you know, when we do that, when we pray, God, you know, he'll bring someone to mind, a neighbor, an old classmate or whatever, and um, um, just initiate a conversation, get into talking about that and say, by the way, you know, what's new with you? And they'll say, oh, well, you know, I got promoted at work and blah, 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 blah. And what's new with you? Oh, you know, I... Funny thing, I went to church the other day, and I heard a guy who used to be an atheist. And um, uh, so you can get into these conversations, but I think when we do pray consistently, fervently, expectantly for our lost friends, that that's the key. That's the key. Have you had a good morning? Lee, thank you so much. Hey, God bless you, man. Thank you. you. Leslie, thank you for being here.